podcast. Coming to you live on a Saturday afternoon. Hope everybody's doing well. Got to get out here and just hang out a little bit. I got some free time. Uh, I'm going to do a beer review. Uh, going to go over uh, a new tobacco, which is Bob's Chocolate Fake from um, Galwood and Hogwarts. Smoking it out of my, I guess you can call it, yeah, you could call it an estate pipe. Buddy's uh, past uncle, my buddy was like, hey, here, you smoke a pipe here, smoke this one. He gave me this uh, Peter Kent longbow, a little bit shaping. I try cleaning up uh, as best as I can. Did the salt bath and all that and, you know, restored as much as I can. Put some obsidian oil on the stem. We tried it uh, like a month or two ago with uh, some Virginia, HH Pure Virginia. And I, I thought that it tasted a little musty. And, um, and I smoked uh, the Bob's Chocolate Fig. This is probably like my third or fourth bowl and the first time in this one, obviously. Still starting to get that musty smell in it, but it's not as bad as the first time. So I might have to smoke it out. It's good tobacco though, man. I was surprised. Um, opening up that tin, I got a nice... I'm like, yeah, it's chocolate flake, but you know, what, what is it? You know, I never really had an aromatic that tastes like chocolate before, so... But yeah, it smells delicious. It smells like... Um, uh, pure, like that... More the uh, milk chocolate morsels you put in the chocolate chips or chocolate chip cookies. What it smells like and it tastes. It's got hints of that, but it's really good tobacco too. It's got Virginia Latakia. Let's see if we got Virginia Latakia and Burley with hints of cocoa and vanilla. Very pleasant. Suggest you get it. I'm not an aromatic smoker. Well, I think I'm turning into one. The beer I'm about to crack open is Sloop's Juice Bomb. It's one of their uh, flagships. I've had it a few times, but uh, yeah, man, I'm about to crack into this New England style IPA. An unfiltered India Pale Ale. Brewed by S Sloop Brewing. It's got a IPA with all the juicy, citrusy flavor of American hops. Amen. Favorite style of beer, man. Currently. But I jump all, I jump all over just like tobacco. I was like, I just... I like beer in general. Sour beer? I don't get it. I mean, I don't get why people like that. Uh, I don't know how, how the brewers got the balls to sell it to make it a fad. I don't know if they had like a batch of beer that was just uh, went bad. They're like, oh, um, yeah, let's sell it as a sour. I got some bad bacteria in it. And it became a, became a style of beer. But I'm sure in all the home brewing contests and all the beer contests out there, there's definitely a, a category for sours, and there's probably subcategories as well. Uh, I don't get it. One beer in particular, it's uh, Westbrook's, uh, it was a ghost ale, G-O-S-E, that's a style of beer and it's a sour. It tastes like seawater and uh, <laughs> like fucking seagull throw up or something and it was just terrible and people like oh yeah I really like this I'm like how could you like that how could you like something that like it's just it tastes like when you you know you they call it a burp when you like burp in some of your 
stomach uh, asses come up in your throat. <laughs> like, how could you like that? I don't buy it. I think it's just, I mean, I can, I can see why some people would like it because some we all have different tastes, but there was, there, was like a, there was a craze out there. I don't get it. I want to get it. A local brewery just down the road, which I'm about to stop by in like an hour. They had a chanterelle mushroom sour ale. What? Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I guess this is my problem, right? Kraken. Oh, I can't even clench this thing. Look at that. Oh, good. There's my U.S. Open Crokin' Old champ, uh, Championship. That's the tournament we host here at the Extra Point Crokin' Old Club. It's a fun day. Yeah, there it is. Cloudy. Uh, like a straw hay, a little bit darker straw hay color. White head. It's got some nice uh, head retention. Doesn't just dissipate. It's... Citrus. What kind of citrus? More of like an orange. Uh, less acidic, like a like a navel orange, or almost almost like a blood orange. It's got a little pine on there. I had this a few times. Disclaimer. Yeah, so that's a rolling, uh, it's a rolling finish, very smooth. You still get your bitterness out of it, though. I used to like the bitterness back when uh, IPAs just started coming around. Well, they have been around forever, right? But, like, when the popularity, you know, everyone started really noticing them and brewing them. They had more of, um, like, a West Coast feel, which means that the hops were more, um, piney, a little more bite to them, it had some more earthy tones to it, now it's more like, and they had citrus, it's, it was, you know, citrus uh, notes in there, but like, it was more, I don't know if you guys ever have Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale, but it's like along, it was along those lines, that's a classic West Coast IPA for a Pale Ale. Um, and that's what IPAs are. Just, yeah, I don't know where you draw the line between a pale ale and an IPA, to be honest with you. But some say it's the ABV. I always wonder that. Like, just, why don't you just call it a pale ale? You know, or, a, <laughs> or an IPA. They're interchangeable. We got everything an IPA now, and everyone's got an IPA. And, um,. That's great. I love them. Love the style. My dad and, and more of his generation do not like it. He always try to like, come on, dad, come on. He doesn't like it. He drinks plenty of beer, or he has in his lifetime so far. But light lagers, lagers. My dad went through stages. I remember when I was, I still, through my whole life, I just remember when I was young, young. I remember my dad and we had an old uh, brown uh, recliner um, down in the basement. It was all like chewed up because I remember him when I was little watching the Yankee game on our little TV. He had Miller High Lifes. Uh, those are clear bottles. I remember that. 
And then, uh, you know, fast forward a few years, you know, I can't really put my, my finger on what exactly what time it was, but then he started, I remember he started drinking Miller Genuine Draft. That was the beer that was always in the fridge. And, you know, and I knew because he always told me to get him and his, his friend's beer. So I'm like, all right, all right. And then it was Killian's for a little while, maybe a year or two. Killian's Irish Red. Then it was Corona. Big in the Coronas for a while. He still drinks them, I think. Then it was Modelo's. But I'm going up to the current date, too. And then, um... And now, he likes Guinness. Isn't that weird? Like, he likes all those lagers, then he goes to an ale. Like, right at the, like, you know, not at the end. Like, you know, what am I saying? But, uh, you know, currently, he's at an ale, and he likes Guinness. And Guinness is very, you know, everyone's like, you know, perceives it as this big, dark, thick, rich beer. It's not. It's very light. Very uh, low in alcohol as well. I like Guinness. I hear that it's better um, overseas. I don't know. Maybe because like people that are in Ireland or visiting Ireland are so jacked up that they're in Ireland. Like, oh, this Guinness tastes great. But it could taste the same as it does over here. I don't know. I heard they just... It's probably fresher over there, right? They say it just tastes different. Which is cool. Hopefully I get to go to Ireland one of these days. My wife and I were supposed to go... Um, oh, we were planning on our, our, this upcoming year, um, our 10th anniversary. We were going to plan a trip to Ireland, but with COVID... Bullshit! I can't can't do it. We'll get there. Instead, we just bought a pool. That's what I was doing this afternoon. Hey, I mean, I knew pools would work, but man, pools are a lot of work. I had my kid. <laughs> I had, we had to dig in the, um, an electrical line five feet from the pool, and I had to get it to the filter. It has to be 18 inches down. And I had to get it to the filter, but then I had to get it to my shed too because the pool that we just had, just we, we laid it right on top of the where the electrical line was from the house to the shed, and that's like my like man cave, so I gotta have power out there. So I couldn't have it running underneath the pool because that's a safety violation. So I cut that, and we had to do electric from we had to take a ditch five feet from the pool to the to the pool filter and then go still stay five feet away from the pool angle it around and go to the shed and where i live it's new england soil and whoever lives in new england knows what i'm talking about when you try to dig like some there's some areas like i, I lived in a town that's five miles away from here and it was all sand but this is all rock and clay and everyone's like yeah you got you know there's some rocks in there no it's all rock and clay. It's like digging the bottom of a creek bed. Like, it's insane. I had to get 18 inches down. I didn't want to pay to rent a trencher. I didn't want to pay for, you know, someone to come in and do it. So I'm doing it myself. Figuring that um, I'll just, yeah, I'll bang it out. It's no problem. 18 inches, no problem. It took me, like, three hours to get, like, 11 feet. And we had, like... 50 feet of like line I had to do I'm like oh my god so I uh, called up the buddies and uh, you know they're good friends some guy's gonna make it that's totally fine I mean who want you know you got shit going on but the guys who came were just such a big help we just we got it out we banged it out my one buddy he sent his two kids over <laughs> which are who are great great guys you know they're like young one's like 22 and one's like 19 and what he's like, he's like, we're like digging out all these freaking rocks with our shovels and clay. And like, oh my gosh. So every five inches you got to like stop and like chisel out a, a big stone or a boulder. And, and uh, <laughs> he's like, you know, my dad's got a, uh, you know, uh, what is it? A, 
ditch witch or something. I'm like, well, you know, that would be helpful if you go get it, you know, but they didn't have a license for the trailer to get it over here. But anyway, they got it over here. It was like a little mini es excavator, and uh, they did the second half of the trench, which was such a lifesaver. It saved me, like, it saved us our lives, first of all, because we would have died, probably. But uh, it also saved us probably, like, eight hours worth of work, man. And that was great, because, like, that night I had a fire, and I had to run the TV out around the fireplace outside, and we watched a UFC fight. Drinking beers. Awesome. Awesome time. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if anybody was out there on the YTPC, what they're doing this afternoon. Probably catching everybody before dinner in the States. And, uh, people in Europe, probably... And elsewhere, probably bedtime. Last bedtime. Gonna go play some Crokinole. Psyched, I haven't played it in a long time with people I know how to play. My buddies said, come on over. We Everyone's got their vaccinations, and so, which I, you know, I didn't really, you know, I adhered to most of the guidelines but with like certain friends around here, like we played cards and stuff on a regular basis during, before the vaccines. You know? It's such a crazy thing though. Still getting some funk out of this. Some musty funk. That's the thing about, um, the state pipes was that I didn't I mean I always <laughs> you don't know obviously you clean them and all that but you just don't know how that person that smoked it that had the pipe you didn't you didn't know that person so besides like the hygiene and everything of it um, you just don't know like you know you could you get kind of weirded out by that because it could be like it's like like a bad dude could have smoked out of this, you know what I mean? But I know the guy, I know my buddy and his family, they're, they're great people, so. But, uh, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, it could be like, if you buy an estate pipe, there could have been a really fucked up person smoking that pipe for years, you don't know. I just don't like that, you know, feeling or whatever. I think too much sometimes. Well, I don't know, as if, like, you know, mass murderer smoked a pipe that you happened to buy that got cleaned up and sold. So I'm really worried about buying estate pipes. A little weird, though. This thing smokes well, though, the... Peter Kent Longbow did some research on it. I guess these are big in the 70s. So they made them in the 70s or something. It smells good. It's still got that freaking, that musty smell in it, though. Taste. Clean it out well. It's got that. I don't know if that stem was supposed to be like that, like a bow. Is that why they call it that? Because it's got a little bend in it? Or is that just because it's old and it sat in a drawer or something for so long? Ooh, no idea. But once I get that musty taste out of here, I think this is going to be a you know, nice pipe to have. It's really worn. Like you can tell this guy, like, I don't know if I can show you. It's like there's like a thumbprint right there. It's just worn. This is black rusticated and it's worn so down so much it's almost red. Uh, but the Bob's the Bob's chocolate flake is going really well with this uh, sloop juice bomb.
I have to get going in a few minutes, but this is nice. I like getting on here and chilling out, hanging out. No really particular thing to talk about other than, you know, what I'm smoking and what's going on during the day. It's probably a bad time of the day to have a live, but... It's cool. Oh yeah, and I was doing the pool stuff, and I had my kid, kids. They were complaining. I'm like, because they were, we're all helping out. The family was out there. Wife was out there picking up the. Uh, I was like pushing, you know, pickaxe in this dirt pile, moving the dirt, putting it against the pool so it grades down from the pool. So, and doing all that, and that took a while. And we, you know, raking out the rakes, uh, rocks that were in that, and the old sod um, that was in the pile. On the outside, my wife was going around picking up those rocks. Kids are out there helping, you know. And they's like, "Oh, it's so, it's so, I'm so tired and all that." And I'm like, I put them on this big rock pile. It's somewhat big, you know. Probably had like a hundred rocks, like this big boulders. I said, and they had to move them like two feet, you know, over into the southern part. And um, hello, hey, sweetie, I'm just talking about you to everybody out here um, about moving the rock pile. Remember that? You're tired and I said, you, you guys are, you guys can't go in until you move that rock pile and then all of a sudden you guys got it done really fast, right? Mm -hmm. That's we were pretending we throw them in and pretending Jigsaw Twin was us. Right, yeah. They, you guys are pretending that you're throwing them. That's great. All right, shut the door. I don't want the smoke going in there. Thank you. But yeah, get on that rock pile. <laughs> My eight and five year old. It was cool though. They uh, they got it done really fast, so they weren't complaining and they had to work. They, they worked hard. It was good. It's good for them. They had their baseball games uh, this morning. Went to that, and uh, oh, you got my fly, you got my fly hat. Here, let me put that on. All right, put this pipe down here. This is my black fly hat because we're going, we're going camping, and we get a place where there's a lot of black flies. So. How about me? I need to wear one. Yeah, well, yeah, you get one too. But this is mine. Do you want to wear this one? No, I want to have the, my own. I want to have my own pink one. Yeah, we'll get you a pink one then. But yeah. This is going to come in handy though, isn't it? See if I can uh, smoke a pipe out of this. Maybe I have to bring this pipe because it... What do you think? It's good. I can't put a hole in it because then the bugs will get in, right? Alright. So yeah, I'm going uh, camping next week. There's a lot of black flies where we're going, and uh, this is going to save me, save my life probably. Going up with my bunch of friends. My buddy's got a camp up there, up in uh, Scroon Lake, but he's off the lake. He's just in the woods, and uh, there's no power up there. He goes up there for a week, you know, and uh, all his buddies, like, you don't get invited to this this camping trip like that's the right it's like one of the things you don't get invited you just show up whenever you want and all, all we're really doing just like just do whatever you want and mostly it's just sitting around a campfire drinking eating cabins up you know right right up there and it's just playing you know there's no power or nothing you're playing games poker all that type of shit for like a week straight and I don't go up there for a week I go up there for like two days two three days and it's just a lot of fun it's like do whatever you want you go go on a hike some guys bring some turkey out of the woods and you know it's fun it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun not to have any uh, restrictions or anything you know I wonder uh, what's going on here with this I get that there Yeah. 
Yep, so probably going to be getting out of here. Uh, thanks for whoever watched or is going to watch. I uh, hope you all have a great Saturday and the rest of the week and all the mothers out there. I hope you have a great Mother's Day. All right. Take care, guys.